What's going on, everyone? It's always place to cross on first. Does give me a little road time today, so I figured I'd spend that road time spreading some good talk, some good word. And as always, place your cross on first. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You know, people, I know a lot of times, us as Christians, you know, we can be hard. We can be harsh. You know, just know nobody gets away with anything. But know this, though. We're not trying to get people punished. We're trying to lead people to God. You know, because there's always hope for every soul that walks this earth. The same God of the Old Testament, the same God of today. You know, God used angels to do a lot of things back in the Old Testament. And he also used angels to do things in the New Testament. Angels would visit people all the time. An angel smote Herod when he was sitting on his little throne of his. You see, why does he smite Herod? Because he didn't give honor to God. So that thing, he gave Herod multiple chances. You know, Herod, the one who sent Jesus back to punish his pilot and wouldn't render a judgment. You know what I'm saying? Here it is. He didn't uh, consented to Jesus' death, killed another, a lot of few other apostles. But even during that time period, it's still time for him to get it right. He didn't. You understand? So, but the thing is, we don't have to worry about vengeance. That's that belongs to the Lord. Because sometimes some people in this world are upset you. And we'll get in our mind, we got something coming for you. But let me tell you something. If they give it over to, if they get their life over to the Lord, they do got something to them, coming to them. Forgiveness and mercy and grace. Everybody that's wronged you is not going to get punished. Because some of these people are going to get their life over to God. And we got to keep that mindset. We don't want, Jesus Christ didn't want nobody to perish. So so shouldn't I. Or so shouldn't you. Or so shouldn't we as a whole, as a Christian whole. You know, I watched a, a lot of videos from different type preachers. And you know, we can seem quite harsh. But we tell you this, we tell you this harshness and this boldness because today is the day. You know, tomorrow's not promised. I'm sure a lot of people make plans like, hey, I'm finna do this and do that. And some of them are evil. And some of them are good. But the thing is, we all gonna leave this place one day, one way or the other. But you wanna get right with God before you do. But don't give up on people. You know, vengeance, you man, if you fell in the hands of the Lord, you won't want nobody else to. I'm not saying I've been chastised like some of the people in the Old Testament, and this and that, but I fell in the hands of the Lord plenty of times, and I hope I don't fall into his hands again. And I lost this, lost that. And I don't, I don't, I'm going to get to a point where I don't blame nobody else. I just go with it. Because if I'm still here, I'm still standing, and Lord, the Lord is still watching over me, I let bygones be bygones. I let the past be the past. Do I believe? Would that mean I forget anything? No, I don't forget. But my hope is to see everybody make it. There are some people that I may feel personally that there's no hope. You understand? Because it's like they keep doing the same thing. But there's still hope for them as long as they live. That's just my mind, my personal opinion in certain cases. But as long as they still alive, they still got a chance to get it right with God. You know, and we still get, get a chance to fall away. Just because somebody is on a bad path right now. I was talking about Manasseh earlier who did horrible things towards the kingdom of God. Try to probably set the kingdom back a few years with all the work that he did but you got to understand something when he gave his life back over to God he had to cleanse up what he broke he didn't just give his life to God and kept the, kept the idols up he had to fix what he broke and a lot of times in our lives as Christians sometimes we got to fix what we broke 
not like we're going to be the fixer, but we got to make amends with a lot of things. We got to start making amends with people because we can't harbor bitterness and anger and hatred in our hearts. We got to let that stuff go. You understand? Because we got to remember at one point in time, we was wretched. And we also got to remember that we are not perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. In all reality, the only choice we made different from most people is we gave our life over to God and we received that forgiveness that he has for us. We just waiting on them to get it. I don't care what people do. I, it do bother me. I'm sure some things I did bother people too when I was living a life full of sin. You understand? Living a certain way, not caring. Because I'm bitter for a lot of reasons. And I try not to be. You know, one of my biggest bitterness is towards... <laughs> I'm finna say it. You know, in my life, I always had women problems. And it's like, no matter how far I go, I still get them. And I'm trying not to be bitter towards anyone because of that. Because I got to look at the good things too. Because I got to understand one thing. If I let somebody in my life, I had to see some kind of good in them at one point in time, even if things didn't work out the way I expected it to work out. I had to see something good. You know what I'm saying? I know there's a few people that had one night stands and had children and stuff like that. But if you've been in a relationship with somebody, you saw something good in them. You saw some kind of potential. And the thing is, even when you leave, y'all ain't hearing me. Even when you leave, that potential is still there. They could change their life around today and live, start living a life pleasing to the Lord. You might see them five years from now and be like, whoa, you totally different. You understand? Know Glory be to God. That's what you want. That's what you want. I'm going to put it like this. Everybody got family members that do things that are not pleased to them. But you don't stop loving them. You don't start hating them. Now that's with your family. So guess what? You grafted into the Lord, the body of Christ now. So we all the brothers and sisters. So you got to look at all the brothers and sisters that ain't family. You got to forgive them just like you would forgive your son or your daughter or your uncle or your auntie or your mother or your father. But there are people that harbor bitterness towards their mothers and fathers. And God doesn't want us to be like that. He wants us to let go and let God. Don't hate nobody. Don't harbor that hatred in your heart. All you're going to do is destroy yourself. You know, he said to hate a brother without a cause is wrong. So even, But even if you got a cause, harboring onto that hatred is only going to destroy you. That's it. It's not going to destroy them. You might be hateful towards them and they get their life over to God. Now what? Lord, you didn't repay them. You didn't do... I fixed them. That's what you want me to do. Fix things that are broken. Broken hearted, broken bones, broken mind, broken spirit. That's our goal. You know what I'm saying? You got to think about this. I'm going to tell you some two stories in the Bible about two different people that were sorcerers. This happened in Acts. You understand? These two people were sorcerers. One of them name was Simon who's been tricking people for years using witchcraft and sorcery to beguile the people. And he saw, he met one of the apostles, and he got baptized. And he wanted what the apostles got, and he wanted to pay for it. You see, the Lord didn't smite him dead. He told, Paul told him, you need to pray. You need to get right with God. He didn't condemn him to hell. Then you fast forward a few chapters later. There was a man who was also a sorcerer. Boy, Jesus. He even had Jesus' name with his in his name. Boy, Yahshua. I guess that was his name. And he was tricking the head man, the chief man who was in charge. And Paul moved in the Holy Spirit, did not kill him did not destroy him. He's struggling with blindness for a season. Sometimes that's all the Lord's going to do. He's trying to give you time. He gave me time. He gave you time. And he's trying to give other people time too. 
I may preach this word with boldness, but I want everybody to come to repentance. Even though I know in my heart that everybody's not, but that's the hope that we have in the Christian walk. Even if I reprove somebody, or rebuke them, or tell them, or warn them, or tell them what the Lord tells them to do, I do it out of love. You think Jesus hated the Pharisees? No, he loved them. He was hard on them. He was harder on them because he loved them. You understand? That's why. You know, I try to read the Bible. I'm trying to like read about some of the people that converted after the fact or some of the Pharisees that were around. But you don't really, uh, you hear about Herod. You understand? You don't hear about too many of the others, Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes. Some of them probably went on, continue to do the same thing, persecuting Christians. Probably died persecuting Christians. And all that work they did to persecute Christians, to stop the work of God, here it is, 2,000 years later, the word of God is still powerful and it's still strong. Jesus is still alive and he's still, on, still in heaven waiting for us to call on him. They didn't destroy nothing. They destroyed many of the apostles, many of the prophets' bodies, but the word of God still remained. You understand? I don't care what people have done. You understand? There's always hope. As long as they live and breathe, there's always hope. Now, I believe in dusting my feet off from people, just like the Bible says. Hey, Lord, it's enough. He said for every temptation, he gives you a way out. And guess what? For every battle, he gives you a way out too. He know what you can bear. Take Elijah. Elijah was doing a lot for the Lord. And the Lord is proud of Elijah for that. But when Elijah reached to a point that he was getting weaker, he replaced him. He gave him something. He sent Elijah to take over the position. And he was received into heaven. God knows what you can handle and what you can't handle. There have been battles in my life. If I think back since I've given my life to the Lord, they are not quick battles. One left battle might last three years. Trying to reach souls and get myself better. Three years. One might last two years. One may last four. One battle may last 10 years. Some battles may last your entire life because there are still people that God wants you to reach that you may have dust your feet off of. That he's like, you know what? It's time to return to them. It's time to go back and reach them. They still here, they're still breathing. Reach them out to them one more time. Let's see if they'll hear me through you this time. Don't wish harm on people. You understand? That's why I always say, we'll see, or you'll see, or I'll see. <laughs> Because I really don't know what the Lord is going to do in any situation. I just trust he's going to do something. And he's going to do what's perfect. Not what I think is perfect. Not what you think is perfect for the situation. He's going to do what's perfect for the situation for the entirety. Don't get selfish. Favor doesn't make you better than nobody else. Y'all ain't hearing me. Favor don't make you better. Don't get high-minded. Don't get prideful. You know, I don't care how many people have wronged me. If I see somebody in problems and trouble, I hate to see it. Even though in my mind, I'll be like, man, I kind of figured that <laughs> would happen. But also in my mind, I was like, that's not what I wanted to see. I wanted to see them rise. I wanted to see them make changes. But at the same time, you're like, whoa. I warned them, I told them, it is what it is. But God has the final say so, not you, not me. You know, but don't wish harm up. He said bless and not curse. Did you, did you hear what he said? He said bless and not curse. I don't care if somebody slapped the taste out of your mouth. Lord Jesus, watch over their soul. I don't care if they steal from you. Lord, watch over their soul. Lord, open their eyes and ears. Uh, assist them, Lord. 
Is your prayer life like that? Or all you want is vengeance? If that's all you want in your life, for people to fall and go to hell, I don't want nobody to go there. You understand? I was headed there. I know I was. And he came in and he changed my life. I'd never forget it. And that's all I do. Try my best to try to reach other souls and talk about God as much as I can to another person when the opportunity presents itself. Because one thing about you being a Christian is going to present themselves. I'm going to tell you how you know what type of person you are. Even people that wrong you still reach towards you. It ain't got nothing to do with you. It got something to do with him. Even people who have done horrible things to you, they still find their way back to you. Why? Because who look who you work for? You are the intermediary to Jesus. And I think you don't even see it that way. You are the connection. So you can't be mean to people. You can't be horrible to people no matter how much. Now you can say no. That's understandable. The Lord said that. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Because he knows what you can handle. You know why a lot of times most Christians don't be around certain people that are wrong them? Because that anger might have a chance to arise again. So we rather distance ourselves from some people. That's not showing a form of weakness. That's actually showing a sign of growth. Maybe I'm not strong enough yet. I just don't want to be in that situation. I don't hate them. I just don't want to be around them. Lord, understand my pain. You think the Lord was doing all that stuff to Jezebel to get her to die in her sin? No, he was allowing all that stuff to happen for Jezebel and Ahab to see, let them know that he is God. Every time that God does anything, it's to let people know that he is God. So you got a choice once you realize he is God. Accept him or don't. Accept what he's allowed to happen or don't. It's simple. That's the only two choices you get in this world. Believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Accept him as your Lord and Savior or don't. You understand? I told y'all that I had people say all kind of things. I'm going to say it again. Fuck you and your God and fuck Jesus too. I didn't heard those type things. And it bothers me. And I'm like, how can they feel that way? But I might didn't say it. Verbally. But when I started falling away from God and turning my back on my own God, that's exactly what I was saying in my mentality. Forget what I've been taught. Forget going to church all these years, finding out the truth. That's basically what I was saying. And that's basically what you were saying. So don't put yourself on a pedestal like you are better than somebody else. Because you are not better. You ain't nothing different. Only difference is you gave your life over to Christ for him to make changes. So your goal before you leave here is to bring as many people to Christ as you can with the truth. The truth will set you free. Lies ain't gonna do nothing. You know, it's oftentimes I'll be wondering why the Lord put certain people on my mind. But the only thing I can realize to do is pray. I can try to figure out, Lord, why am I thinking it? Oh, okay, they name on my mind, let me pray. Do you understand? Let me pray. If you want me to reach out to him, I'll call him. You understand? If that's what he wants. That's not always what he wants. You won't be surprised how many times you might be sitting on your couch at your house thinking and then certain random thoughts pop into your head. Might have been an angel, a spiritual entity trying to let you know, hey, I need you. Why me? Because you going to pray. That's what I call you for. I'm talking to you today. Do what you were called to do. Minister. You ain't necessarily got to be around people to minister to them. We serve a God that can be anywhere at any time. All we have to do is be obedient. We don't have to be everywhere. A lot of y'all are running y'all self-rapid trying to be everywhere, trying to play God. 
Let me pause and I will continue.